My name is Maria and I'm the CEO of International Surrogacy Center. We're located in California. I myself have been in the surrogacy industry for 15 years. It was my first job right out of college and I absolutely loved it and thought I never want to do anything else. So here I am. <laughs> um, we, ISC has been in business since 2012, seven years. We have um, 10 wonderful women that have been surrogates themselves and guide you through this, you know, through this journey. We have staff that speaks French and Spanish. And did I mention we were in California? I think I did. We're in California, Southern California. We're located in between San Diego and Los Angeles. It's called uh, Marietta area. But if I tell you Marietta, you probably don't know where it's at. So just in the middle of San Diego and Los Angeles. And I'll let you with your intro. Oh, thanks. Okay. Hi, I'm Francesca. I'm the executive director. Um, my role at the agency is I'm actually the first person once you reach out to us. Um, I'm the person that will walk you through the very first steps. So the very first steps would, might be, I have no idea about the process, I, we're ready to have a baby, to I know a lot about the process and I just have a few more questions. And I'm happy to walk you through the steps in whichever manner that might be. Um, so you would talk with me at first um, and I'll help you get started with what needs to be done next. Um, if you come to me and I, I, the first thing I'll tell you if you, have, if you don't have embryos created, would to be create your embryos. Um, that's really important that you do that first, that actually finding your surrogate and your agency is probably is done second. Um, so stress-wise and financially, it's better to do the embryos first and then look for your surrogate. So I'll talk you, walk you through that. Um, also help you with getting your questionnaire ready, your profile made, so that once you do find a surrogate with us, that's what I'll share with her. Um, your match with your surrogate is a, a mutual decision, so she'll also look at your profile to see if she's interested in meeting you both as well. Um, the other thing is I'll coordinate a, a meeting with her once you're interested in her profile. Um, that meeting is, I'll be in that meeting as well. Maybe it's in person. I know we're kind of far away from California, but maybe it's in person or, or, or done through Skype but we'll meet the surrogate. Um, you'll ask questions, she'll ask questions. It's just a chance to get to know each other a little bit more. Um, and then after the Skype, I'll talk with you a little bit and see, I should get a vibe of excitement from you because this is the first step that you're beginning the process. So if you don't have that, I loved her, or it feels really good, then it's not the right match for you. And it's okay, I'm happy to say, let's go to the next one. I'd rather you do that. Um, I've been a surrogate myself, and, and that's one of the beginning steps, is to feel that excitement of matching. And so you should have that piece as well. Um, and so it's me, you'll talk with that first. I'll help you match, and then you'll work with one of our case managers. Um, and the case managers have been surrogates themselves. Um, so like I said, I've been a surrogate. Um, I love it. <laughs> I've been a surrogate four times and just recently had to retire. So <laughs> it's really hard to say. She didn't want to I don't retire. want to. Yeah. She was in denial. <laughs> I am, yes, <laughs> still. Um, but I, it's just, it's a highlight of, of my life. I can't even describe. But the, the feeling of watching the families have holding the baby for the first time is just, is just I, I, surreal. Um, and, th and that's what drove me again to do it. And then again, and then again. So um, I, I'm happy to answer any questions as a surrogate. Like I was saying to the last group, I know you don't have tons of surrogates walking around um, that you can ask, ask questions. So I'm happy to answer anything. I love talking about it and I'm happy to, to share my experiences with you. And they're all a little bit different, which is great. Um, so that's my role and I'll let her. Our topic we chose for today was our surrogate selection because obviously the surrogate selection is the most important part of the agency. I also forgot to mention earlier though that we um, primarily work with international clients. 95% of our clients are international. We have like a three to 5% from the US. So we do understand you know, the time difference, the needs, how you're so far away. Things as basic, you know, that you might not know, you know, going to California to pick up your baby or how the obstetricians work over there. So we give our IPs a lot of guidance when it comes to that. Also at the end, when the baby's born and you come to pick up the baby, we help you with the birth certificate and passport. We have someone from our agency go with you 
and go in person and help you fill out the form to pick up the birth certificate and fill out the applications because there's a lot of even simple things like, you know, address. You're like, do I put my address in, you know, where I live or do I put a local address? So we kind of guide you through all that and make sure you get the documents so you can come back home with your baby. Okay, surrogate selection. We only accept about 6% of the women that apply to our agency. We are very, very, very selective. And we take anywhere from two to four months to accept a surrogate and have that surrogate ready to share. She has to meet a criteria. One of the basic ones is age between the ages of 21 and 38, sometimes 40, but it depends. <laughs> uh, she must be um, financially stable meaning that this is not her main source of income. She can't come to us and say, oh, well, I'm doing it for the money. I don't have a job. No, no, no. There needs to be financial stability. She either has to be employed or maybe she's um, married or has a boyfriend and they live together and he's employed. They have to prove with pay subs and or bank statements that they're financially stable and this is extra money. This is money to maybe to put your kid through college or buy a car, whatever it is. But that's, that's a huge factor for us is financial stability because we feel that someone that's already financially stable and is doing it because they want to help and of course the money is also helpful, that is, you know, it's different. It's not the driving force. Mm -hmm. okay. Also support. It's very important that the surrogate has some sort of support. If she lives by herself, she's single, she must have like family or friends that are close to her that can help her during the journey because what if she gets put on bed rest? She's single, she needs someone there that can help her with her children or what if she has to go to the IVF clinic three, four, five times, you know, in a month period and her kids get out of school at 2.30 and her appointments at four. And so that's very important too, that she has some support and people to help her around her that can care for her children or give her a ride if she's not feeling well. You know, she's in her first trimester and she's really sick, we need someone there if she's single. Usually if she's married, obviously the husband should help. <laughs> no major complications during her own pregnancies and deliveries. We do obtain her medical records from her previous pregnancies from her obstetrician and the delivering hospital. And we don't allow the surrogate to hand us the records herself. We have to request them and obtain them directly from the provider, only because a few months ago we heard a horror story where a surrogate handed her um, records to an agency and she pulled out pages out of it. So that's one thing that's very important where whoever you match with is that make sure that the records were obtained directly from the provider and not from the surrogate. So we do review her medical records. I mean, we're obviously not the IVF doctor. We do look through them because a lot of times you get a lot of good information from that person. You'll see if she was missed a bunch of appointments or let's say she was late to every appointment or didn't have prenatal care for two, three months. There's a lot of things you can get from that that can be major red flags. So we review all her medical records, look through them. We do the psychological screening, the criminal background check, and also if she lives in a household and there's other, maybe she lives with her mom or her brother, we do a criminal background check on anyone that lives in her household that's over the um, 18 years old. So we do all, the, all this prior to sharing a profile with our intended parents because we want to make sure that when we share a profile, the surrogate has been pre-screened by us, we've done all our homework, and we're confident that we're giving you a good, suitable surrogate. Yeah, go ahead. Um, one piece that I mentioned with those records, what we do too is um, at the point of if you find a surrogate you're interested in, um, what I can do is before I even mention to her that I have intended parents that are interested in her, is I can send her medical records to your IVF doctor. And your IVF doctor then can review them based on the records and see if she's even a, a good candidate for you. Um, and then when I get the okay, then I can, th and you're okay with that too, then I'll share your profile with her. So those records are really good that we'll be able, we can pre-send them to your clinic, or if you want me to do it after, we always will have to, but it's just when is, I'm, we're happy to do earlier. Does anyone have any questions regarding the surrogate selection or anything you want to ask? Questions? Yeah, we, we do. I mean, we work with any clinic that you choose to work with. I mean, it's your choice what clinic you want. But we do obviously have um, 
clinics that we have a good relationship with and our clients are happy and our surrogates are happy and that is um, San Diego Fertility and California Fertility Partners, they're both actually here. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ringler, Dr. Donishman, and Dr. Friedman. They're just great doctors. We've been, I've, I mean, I've, I've personally known them for 10, 15 years and our clients and surrogates are just happy there. We have no benefit who you choose. It's just nice to work with people that, you know, treat our clients well. <laughs> so I'll talk a little bit about why California. You know, we all know California is a little bit more expensive and I think you kind of pay for what you get and it's, we have one of the best laws. In California, you do a parental establishment before the, the baby's born. This means that legally, it's your baby when it's still in the surrogate's belly. So your attorney goes to the courthouse and they establish that you're the legal parents of this child. That copy goes to the hospital where she's gonna deliver. You get a copy and we get a copy as well. So when the baby's born, it immediately goes to the parents. There's no other paperwork to be done. We don't need to you know, have the surrogate sign anything. We don't need to go through any adoption, nothing. It's your child. We do the birth certificate and passport. So if the, ba if the baby was to be born and you weren't present at the hospital, the baby cannot stay with the surrogate because it's not legally her child. The baby has to go to the nursery and wait until you, hopefully don't take more than 48 hours to get there <laughs> and get there and pick up the baby. We do go personally with our, did I already say that with our parents? I no. forgot if I already said, okay. With our parents to pick up the birth certificate and passport. I forget what I told the other group and what I told you, sorry. Um, yeah, I'll let you okay. that. Um, the last piece that we'll talk about is the, the surrogate and um, intended parents relationship. Um, and everyone comes to us with not sure of what they want. And it's a good thing to think about um, what you're open to, meaning do you want to have a, a closer relationship, maybe just during the pregnancy, or maybe you want to continue this as a lifelong um, uh, friendship. And it's really up to you. Um, I just ask that you're honest. You know, it's, I think it's more hurtful for both parties if somebody changes their mind midway or at the end. Um, but going into it, just w what would you like? What would you like to have um, with the two intended fathers that I helped? We probably have the best relationship, um, and I keep in touch with them. They send me pictures all the time. But to be honest, just so you know, um, what makes me excited, it's not that I get to see pictures of their kids. Of course, you know, the, I love kids. All kids are precious. But I love seeing them as how happy they are, just how their family is, their dynamics have changed. And I, I get to see that and be a part of seeing that. Um, so that's what's special to me. And is, are you, would you like that? Would you like to keep in touch with your surrogate? And to be honest with you, I would say 95% of our surrogates would love that, would love to be in touch. They might not want to, you know, Skype every week with you still. And, and we all know having a child, you're tired, you're busy, you're, and that's not probably to be expected, but it'd be nice to have pictures and, and updates of just how you're doing as a family. Um, that's, it's nice to see that. That's kind of an, an extension of, of that surrogacy journey, um, just to have that piece too. Um, and it's up to you what you tell your children and if you want your surrogate to be known or involved. Um, but it's a, it's a wonderful piece to continue if that's what you choose. And if you don't, that's okay too, as long as, like I said, we'll let the surrogate know from the beginning, you know, you would like to have a good relationship during, but afterwards you kind of just want to go off and have your family and all the, that piece is done. And I think as long as they know it and upfront, they're okay with that, continuing like that.